Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Mallory. I am the Vice President of Communications for Susan B. Anthony List. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar, we're a national pro-life group based actually here in Northern Virginia, and our mission is to elect pro-life leaders, and then once we've done that, to work with them to pass life-saving law and policy. Our sort of like short way of saying that is you need to have the right people in office if you're going to pass the right kinds of laws. So um, I've worked there for almost 10 years now. I started as an intern. Um, I was always pro-life in high school, and uh, it, was, it was a great... Um, it was just like God's timing that I got this job after after college um, interning. So anyway, I hope that all of you consider um, joining us in the fight, you know, after uh, after not just coming to the march for, you know, one day a year, although it's so important, incredibly important, um, but continuing to witness and, and carry on the fight for life. Um, so my job at SBA is to talk to the media, and usually I'm doing like shorter interviews. So I hope you don't mind. I have some notes and, of course, the PowerPoint. But Sammy and Georgette asked me to um, talk about a couple of different things to help build up your knowledge about the pro-life movement. Uh, and I'm sure you, you know a lot about it already, having made this commitment to come here to the march. But for the purposes of this talk, there's three main points that I want to focus on, and I'm going to talk really quickly um, got my little clicker here. Um, the first is why people are pro-life and sort of the basics of our civil rights movement. Um, the scientific evidence that exists uh, proving that life begins at the moment of sperm egg fusion, so AKA conception, and then some of the forces that we are up against. So the first thing, why are we pro-life? Um, why is this a big deal? Well. In order to answer this question, why is it a big deal? We have to answer the question, what is this thing? What is this thing in the womb? Um, is it a clump of cells? Is it alive? Is it the equivalent of your appendix or a loose tooth that has to be pulled? Um, does anyone have a problem with your appendix being taken out or a tooth being pulled? Besides the fact that it probably will hurt? <laughs> no, we don't have a problem with, with those things because none of those things are another person's body. Um, they're not the separate, a completely separate human being. You know, your appendix and your tooth, they're part of your body. They're not a separate human body. Um, so we'll talk a little bit in a minute about fetal development, but um, I think the most important thing to understand is that from the moment of conception, that thing in the womb has its own DNA, um, sometimes a separate blood type from his or her mom, sometimes, if it's a boy, completely different gender. Um, and he or she is just unique from the moment of conception and just needs time, nourishment, and a safe place to grow. And we might not be that different from the unborn. How many of you guys need people to <laughs> Keep keeping you safe and provide nourishment and um, yeah, some hands. Yes, <laughs> good. Thank you, young lady. Um, so, so why is this such a big deal? Why is there an ongoing human rights battle against abortion? Well, one thing I want to note about Susan B. Anthony, she is the namesake of our organization, and she is more um, famously known for. A, being a suffragette, fighting for the women's rights to vote. And what a lot of people don't realize is that Susan B. Anthony and her compatriots, they uh, saw abortion as an exploitation of women. They saw it as profoundly anti-woman, and in fact, that it was something that, a tool um, of, of men to cover up crimes of rape, infidelity, and so they saw it as profoundly anti-woman. So the pro-life movement goes back very, very far, longer than just Roe versus Wade in 1973. Um, but, um, but that's really important, is, is what has the impact of Roe versus Wade been? Um, what happened during that Supreme Court case was that seven unelected judges, who were all men, um, struck down in a single day every single law that had been passed up until that point in the states protecting the right to life of the unborn. Um, and established 
a legal regime of abortion on demand up until the moment of birth. A lot of pro-life people that I talk to don't realize how extreme the situation here is in the United States. We're only one of seven nations in the whole world that allow abortion after five months of pregnancy. That's more than halfway through pregnancy when there is scientific research that shows the unborn child can feel pain, um, if not earlier. And, and so we've gotten ourselves into the situation where we have just this terrible legal status quo that, that allows unborn children to be killed way beyond their viability. Um, but how we treat unborn children, it, it's not settled in the hearts and minds of the American people. How do we know this? Well, because you're here right now, because this is the 46th annual March for Life. Um, a woman named Nellie Gray, she, found, she founded the March for Life the first anniversary of Roe versus Wade um, when she asked pro-lifers to come and join her to, to march on the Supreme Court. So you're here now, maybe your parents came before, your grandparents, um, and so we just know that, that it, it's not over. We've got to keep fighting. And especially over the last 10 years, hundreds of pro-life laws have been passed at the state level. So we know that there is just continuing building momentum to pass laws that save lives. So, okay, on to fetal development real quick. Um, I'm not a scientist, but, <laughs> but I thought you would like some of these pictures. Um, revealing what's going on inside the womb during a pregnancy. Um, there are a couple undeniable scientific facts. So from the moment of conception, the cell and the cells start to divide, there's a human person there, a very small one, <laughs> but it's a human person nonetheless. Um, there's different names for it, you know, embryo, fetus. The other side likes to co-op that language and, and um, use it to try and dehumanize the unborn person, but it's really just like saying toddler or teenager or you know adolescent. These are they're, these are just words for the different stage that we're in during our development. The embryo can only ever develop into a human being in a further stage of life. It can't become a cat, can't become a dog, can't become a Pokemon. I don't know if that's still a thing. <laughs> I'm, I have the word. I have this very interesting, fun fact about me. If there's like, um, what do you call those things? Like when, like a special day when there's a lot of Pokemon in a public place. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like the special events. I'm always where that's happening. Like I see people on their phones, and it. Anyway, sorry. That's it's like an aside. Um, wouldn't that be funny if they pick tomorrow in downtown Washington, D.C. to have like a catch em day? Um, so <laughs> a baby's heart starts beating at six weeks old. And by eight weeks, mom and dad can hear that on the ultrasound. Um, you can see the fingers and toes starting to form. Um, this is not a blob of cells. That is a lie of the abortion lobby. Um, there are several methods of abortion. So we're just gonna go over this briefly, but um, chemical abortions are completed by taking a pill. It basically works by essentially starving the baby to death. Plan B, Ella, these are spun as emergency contraception by Planned Parenthood and the abortion lobby, but if conception has already happened, it does work to take the life of a child. Um, surgical abortions are done by abortion, like it, oh dear. Okay, I'm gonna talk really quickly. Um, but basically there's these different types of abortions that they choose depending on the, the gestation of pregnancy. So first trimester abortion um, tears the baby apart through vacuum aspiration. Second trimester, they're dismembering a child in pieces. Third trimester, they're, they're using um, sometimes a needle or um, saline infusion abortion to, to actually kill the baby before they take them out. As difficult as it is to say these things and to hear them, imagine what it's like for the unborn child who experiences that very brutal death. These procedures, this is why 
it's such a big deal. This is why we're here. Um, I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip a little bit but and go back to Planned Parenthood. Um, because this is who we are up against, okay? Planned Parenthood is the nation's largest abortion provider. They, in the last three years alone, have done about a million abortions. Every year, they perform more than 330,000 abortions. That is three times the nation's like largest football stadiums, whichever ones they are, the biggest ones. Three, more than that. <laughs> um, so they claim to offer all kinds of health care to women, but all you have to do is look at their own annual reports to find out that for every 10 pregnant women who walk into Planned Parenthood, nine of them walk out having undergone an abortion. Why, why are pregnant, why, why are so many pregnant women walking into their doors? Well, it's because Planned Parenthood aggressively markets birth control that is faulty, like literally does not work. Consumer reports, I just became a homeowner, so I'm very into consumer reports now. But consumer reports <laughs> rated Planned Parenthood's condoms as the most ineffective. Former Planned Parenthood workers have testified to the fact that they give out the most ineffective birth control pills. So all this talk about contraception is to say that Planned Parenthood aggressively markets these, these things that don't work and promotes promiscuous behavior to then have women come through their doors pregnant and to sell them abortion. Anybody know how much an abortion costs? Anywhere between three hundred to eight hundred dollars, sometimes more. This is a major money making or money maker for Planned Parenthood. Um, they're not a good organization. They've been caught on camera willing to perform abortions on girls as young as twelve. In cases of sex selection abortion, when the mom maybe has a a girl already and really wants a son and is pregnant with the daughter, um, when they've been caught on tape. Uh, willing to aid and abet sex traffickers and, and do abortions on girls who are under the control of pimps. They've been sued for failing to report sexual abuse, including sexual abuse of children. Um, and of course, you, you must have seen the videos and, and the news in the last few years about their willingness to, um, it, not just their willingness, but what they do to um, harvest and sell the body parts of unborn children. So... Planned Parenthood, it's an abortion empire that fails to look out for the well-being of its patients, ignores the reality of the child in the womb, and wounds women. And so I urge you to protect yourself, especially the young people in the room, protect yourself and protect your friends by remembering this information and then sharing it with them. Um, I think you're going to look next at a video that reveals some of the um, the effects of abortion on women. Uh, and this is so important. Um, so I'll, we'll, we'll go to that video, but I did just want to say that it is our duty as born people to, to stand up for those who cannot speak and to, and to just witness to the sanctity of life. And so I'm so thankful that you guys have come to Washington and that you plan to march tomorrow. It is just so important. If you had no voice, wouldn't you want someone to speak for you? So thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Okay.